uh, from my standpoint in Washington, D.C. As, as well. And uh, Brandon's uh, correct. We uh, pause today. The President gave a very uh, dramatic uh, speech today at the Lincoln Memorial, uh, the site where 50 years ago not only did Martin Luther King speak, uh, but my colleague and dear friend in the United States Congress, John Lewis, who uh, I so deeply revere, who has, uh, who has been to this state and this district on uh, uh, several uh, occasions, and uh, I can't tell you what an honor it is to serve with him, not only in the Congress, but on the Ways and Means Committee, where we both uh, serve as well, and to have been blessed uh, to travel with him and march with him in that historic journey uh, from Selma uh, to Montgomery and across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Uh, he is an iconic American hero, uh, and I have such great respect for him. And I think the President and John Lewis had it right that uh, we certainly have come a long way uh, since uh, 1965. Excuse me, 1963. We've come a long way since 1965, too. <laughs> Steve Harris would know as well. But, uh, uh, and indeed, uh, much progress has been made. And how can one not reflect on the election of the first black president of this country? And what a. Uh, <laughs> and these are extraordinary times in which we live. And you can go back and reflect and see who was president in 1963. It was John Kennedy, the first Catholic elected to that position. And you can see back in that time, we're in the midst of escalation in a war in Vietnam. And that so many of the nation's movements were unfolding uh, at this time. And there has been great progress that has been made, and yet much work that still remains to be done. And the President was clear today about building a coalition of conscience and compassion is what we need to move forward. And uh, I think he's right. And that's what's so vitally important in what we need to do in Washington, uh, D.C. So uh, let me begin tonight, first of all, by giving you an idea of the background and where we stand and what our president faces in terms of the struggles uh, uh, down in Washington, uh, D.C. Uh, this is rather, was an old Chinese saying, I believe, is that may you live in interesting times. <laughs> and uh, these are certainly interesting times. And as we speak uh, this evening, uh, the president, and his administration, and the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense are reviewing all the information as it relates to the unbelievable, inhumane attack and using of toxic gas on people. It is repugnant and should be condemned by the whole world. Yet I feel very strongly and have encouraged the President, I have every reason to believe that he will convene Congress and decide before there is any American troops committed to the ground or that any use of force were to occur, that the Congress should be consulted and the Congress, whose responsibility under the War Powers Act it is to declare war or to take action should take that action, it's the Congress's responsibility as well. And so uh, it's my firm belief that that's the path that we should follow. Uh, during this uh, recess, we've had an opportunity to do an awful lot of, uh, of forums. The number one issue for this district and for every district across this country remains jobs and economic recovery. Uh, 
Unfortunately, the President's Jobs Bill is being blocked from being introduced on the floor of the House of Representatives. That bill deserves a vote. It should be brought to the floor, and whether you agree with it or not, the American people need to see in the light of day where you stand on the issue of jobs for the country, whether or not you're going to vote in favor of putting the country back to work, investing in its infrastructure, investing in its education system, investing in its people, investing in a country that desperately needs <laughs> to go back to work. I don't have to tell people in this district about infrastructure concerns, about roads, bridges, and education systems, all of which need the federal government's attention. And instead, what they've got from the federal government is sequestration, which I'll get to and explain as well. We also need an up or down vote in the House of Representatives on immigration issues. We need to make sure that people have an opportunity and a path forward to citizenship that they pay the fine, that they go through an identification process, and that they learn to the, lang the language and pay taxes and then welcome to our country. But it's too much of an integral part of who we are both as a nation and where we need to go, not only from a human rights perspective, but also from the need and an employment situation here in this country. And again, whether you agree or disagree with the bill already passed in the United States Senate where they sought a compromise out on this issue and achieved it, should be taken up for a vote. It shouldn't be blocked and obstructed, as should be universal background checks on guns. That should be taken for a vote in the United States Congress as well. Why? 91% of the American people agree that there should be universal background checks. 74% of people who belong to the NRA agree that there should be universal background checks. It is not the entire solution to the problems that we face, not only here in the state of Connecticut, but as we witnessed on TV, as we saw that fearful and fretful scene of children fleeing from a school building in the state of Georgia. These are important pieces of legislation. And people can agree or disagree, but the public ought to know where you stand. I support the President's initiative on jobs. I support the compromise that's come out of the Senate. I think we can do better than what the Senate did, but I support that compromise and I support universal background checks so that we can make sure that we have a key component of protecting our citizens from having guns fall into the hands of the wrong people. I fully respect people's right to bear arms, but I also respect the rights of every single parent and every single police enforcement entity to be able to protect the children 